So in this video we're going to calculate the Taylor polynomial to the fifth degree at the point pi over 2 for the function cosine of x. And as always when calculating Taylor series you need to work out three things before you even start. So the degree of the Taylor polynomial you want to find. So the degree is always in the variable n. Well in our Taylor polynomial here we're going to calculate the fifth degree. So in our case here n is 5. And at the point A is also the second important part. So our um, calculations here is going to be around pi over 2. So here A will become pi over 2. And also the function is important. And the function is cosine of x because that's what you're going to have to differentiate. So the generic formula for a Taylor polynomial is this one here along the bottom. Just highlight some of the parts there. and what you'll see here, you've got tn of x, which means t5 of x in our case, because n is 5. That's the fifth degree Taylor polynomial. That's what that stands for, t5 of x. So that's that bit uh, explained. So now what we've got here is, is f of a. So this f of a is the value of the function at the point a. So basically for us here, this just means the value of cosine of pi over 2. And then here you've got these fractions with x minus a to the power of something each time. So here on the top of the fractions you're going to get the derivatives. So it's the first derivative on the first one, then the second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative and so on. And this here is the nth term for the Taylor polynomial which I'll come to in a minute. So you've got the f nth derivative here. Then on the bottom of the fraction you've got 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial and so on and so on all the way up to n factorial. So in our case n is 5 so these n's will be substituted for 5. And then we've got x minus a and a is pi over 2. So this here will just become x minus pi over 2 to the power of 1, x minus pi over 2 to the power of 2, x minus pi over 2 to the power of 3. So you can see the pattern forming here. You've got n, n and n there on this generic one. So here you've got 4, 4 and 4, 3, 3 and 3, 2, 2 and 2. And then this would be a hypothetical 1, 1 and 1. So if you've got that pattern on your generic formula, then you know you've done the right thing and you're on to a good thing as you go along and calculate. And we're going to do this in one step at a time. It's very important not to try and do this all in one go. Otherwise you end up in a bit of a muddle and a little bit confused. So if you go on at one stage at a time, it makes things a lot easier. So first stage, we're going to differentiate the function cosine of x five times. And the values of each of those derivatives at pi over 2. So here's our function cosine of x. And at pi over 2, basically which is f of pi over 2, is 0. So i.e. pi over 2, you could also call that 90 degrees if you want to go into the uh, in the degrees rather than in radians. So you've got cos uh, cosine of 90 is 0. So that's the first calculation. So now we go on and differentiate. So the to differentiate cosine, the derivative of cosine is minus sine. So that's what we have here. So the first derivative is minus sine. And we want to calculate that at pi over 2. So the first derivative of pi over 2 is minus 1. Because we know that sine of pi over 2 is 1. So minus sine of pi over 2 will be minus 1. That explains that one. Then the second derivative will be the derivative of minus sine of x, so we keep going down each one at a time, is minus cosine of x. So what we know is that cosine of x is 0, so minus 0 is still 0, so the second derivative is 0. So that's uh, going to make things a little bit easier for us later on. The third derivative is the derivative of minus cosine of x, which gives us sine of x, and then a third derivative at pi over 2. So basically what we want to find is sine pi over 2, which is 1. And earlier we calculated that 
minus sine of pi over 2 is minus 1. So really we're just basically substituting more values in here that we'd already calculated. And then the fourth derivative is much the same as before. The fourth derivative is cosine of x and with our value at pi over 2, the fourth derivative we're going to calculate at pi over 2. And we know that cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So there's another 0 there. So that's going to make things a little bit easier later on as well. And then the fifth derivative is the derivative of cosine of x. Well, we did that originally on the original function. Cosine of x was minus sine of x. So again, we've already calculated that. So all we've got to do now is just put that in there as minus sine of x. And the fifth derivative of pi over 2 is basically minus sine of pi over 2 is minus 1, which again, we'd already calculated here. And you'll notice there's a little pattern forming now. Cosine, minus sine, minus cosine, sine. Cosine, minus sine. Then if we went on to 6, 7 and 8, you'd get minus cosine for the 6th derivative, sine for the 7th derivative, and back to cosine for the 8th derivative. So that would... Uh, be keep going on and on and as would the values then we go from one from zero to minus one zero to one and then zero to minus one and then zero to plus one and then again zero to minus one and so on and so on and that would keep going on so now we've calculated all our derivatives in a nice little table i always advise you to lay them out in a nice little table like this we can um, start substituting some values into our formula so we we'll substitute pi over 2 for a for a start, just to clear things up a little bit. Then we can relate then to all these values that we've calculated here. So t5 of x, fifth degree Taylor polynomial, equals f of pi over 2, plus the fifth derivative of pi over 2 over 1 factorial, x minus pi over 2, plus the second derivative of pi over 2 over 2 factorial, times x minus pi over 2 squared. And then so on and so on. So these were just third derivative, three factorial, x minus pi over two cubed. The fourth one is that one there, as we've done there, fourth derivative. And the fifth one, so we now put in for five for the n, fifth derivative of pi over two over five factorial times x minus pi over two to the power of five. And these five factorials, we can calculate these no problem. That's just one times two times three times four times five, which is 120. The 4 factorial is up to 4, so that's 24. The 3 factorial is up to 6. The 2 factorial is 2, and the 1 factorial is 1. So that can be the next thing we can do now. We can substitute the derivatives and these factorials into our formula. So we've got the value here is 0. So f of pi over 2 is 0. So that's why we put a 0 in there. If you go back to the original calculations, that was a 0. So hence why we put in the zero in there. Then the first derivative at pi over two was minus one. So now I put in a minus one in place of that one there. So that's that one taken care of. The second derivative was zero. So there's the zero over two. Obviously that's going to cancel out later, but it's good to put it in there so you can see your pattern forming. The third derivative was one. So then we put the 1 in there and then divided that by 6 because that's a 3 factorial. And all these, just while we're on this, the x minus pi over 2 cubes to the 4th and x minus pi over 2 to the 5th and so on, all these, they just stay. They, nothing happens to them at this stage. So they just stay like that. And uh, so where was we? The 4th derivative, yeah, we said was 0. So that's 0 over 24. And the 5th derivative we said was minus 1. So minus 1 over 120. So there we go, there's the pattern here, look, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1. And that's what we've got on the top line, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1. Okay, so now we can do a bit of simplification here. So the zeros, so this one can disappear, this squared term can disappear, and this fourth to the power of 4 term can disappear, because they're all 0 divided by something and then times that is still going to be zero, whatever you've got there. So that can just disappear. And then next thing we can do, these minus signs can come down here and make take the place of the plus signs. This one here stays as a plus because that's a plus one. And this one here is a minus one, so this plus can become a minus. So then we can put these into our formula. So then we've got here, so I'll put pi over two minus x 
Now you could have left it as x minus, you could have left it as minus x minus pi over 2. So minus 1 times x minus pi over 2. But I've multiplied through the minus sign. So I think it just looks a little bit neater. So if we did minus times x, minus 1 times x is minus x. So that's the minus x there. And then minus 1 times minus pi over 2 gives us plus pi over 2. So that's why I put a plus pi over 2 over there. It's always nice to have a constant at the beginning of a Taylor polynomial if it's needed, rather than put the x, like the minus x and then minus pi over 2. So that's why I've done that. This values to the same thing as the minus 1 times x minus pi over 2 anyway, so we're not changing anything. And then here I've just basically, the x minus pi over 2 cubed, I've just moved it to the numerator and then left the 6 in the denominator. So that explains that one there and it stays as a positive. The 0 here, so this term disappears, so there's nothing in here. And then this one here, the minus sign I've put in there. And then the x minus pi over 2 to the power of 5, I've just moved to the numerator as I did with the cube sign and left the 120 in the denominator. So that's our final answer. So fifth degree polynomial for cosine of x of pi over 2 is pi over 2 minus x plus x minus pi over 2 cubed divided by 6 minus x minus pi over 2 to the power of 5 over 120. And then before we move on to the last bit, I've just drawn a graph to see what this uh, accuracy is like. This thick black line is our Taylor polynomial. So you'll see it goes off and comes in from positive infinity and diverges off down to negative infinity. Whereas the cosine uh, function, as we know, oscillates between plus 1 and minus 1 in a, in a uniform manner like this. So we wanted to calculate our Taylor polynomial at pi over 2. So pi over 2 is somewhere around here somewhere. I would say it's about probably there, isn't it? So you can see that our graph is very accurate to the point where we wanted to calculate it. And it stays accurate all the way from x equals 0 and into the negative values as well. But as soon as it goes into the negative values, it starts to peel away and just goes a little bit less accurate. But that doesn't matter because we was only interested in this point anyway. And then when it goes past plus 2, then it starts to uh, veer away at this point here. And this point here is probably going to be around about pi. So when it gets to pi, 3.14, it's then going to start to tear away and then go down. And the sine, uh, the cosine function, sorry, is going to carry on all the way along. So we could be very satisfied that our Taylor polynomial is very accurate. Okay, so that concludes the video. And uh, thanks for watching. And as always, please remember to subscribe and any comments leave below. Thanks very much.